Hey guys, it's Tucker in here. In today's video, we'll be building the best $1,300 gaming PC. That is right. If you guys do not know, I have a neighbor in the neighborhood who wanted to upgrade the PC, but there was a few problems with it. It was a pre-build from Dell. So you know for a fact that that was a bit of tedious to actually figure it on out. And we figured out how the actual uninstall is power supply, but if you want to uninstall it, you have to unplug a bunch of stuff. And on top of that, you have to remove the CPU cooler. So you can see it was a total hassle to actually remove. And then even on top of that, if we were to get the actual power supply upgrade, we would actually have to figure out how to fit his new GPU in because we didn't think it would actually fit. So we decided to scrap the PC upgrade and just build him a whole new PC from the ground up. And today we're building the best of the best gaming PC. So let's get into the specs. First of all, we have the CPU. We went with the Ryzen 7. 500 700g this is a 8 core 16 thread cpu and of course it's got integrated graphics and supposedly you can game on these graphics if you really want to but we really don't need that with the gpu however if we do have any problems with the gpu down line we can use the integrated graphics which is absolutely amazing this has a base clock of 3.8 gigahertz and a boost clock of 4.6 so this will be amazing for actually gaming coming at a cost of only 169 dollars this is honestly such a steal now for the CPU cooler, we were gonna go with the one that came actually with this actual CPU, which was like the Wraith Stealth Cooler, but I actually wanna upgrade him that for free. So I got actually the Deep Cool AK400. I actually have this on hand for past videos. I thought we just upgraded his PC with this. That way it has the best cooling possible. And this is only $35 and it's honestly so freaking good. For RAM, we went with 64 gigabytes of 32 megahertz of Corsair Vengeance. Now, if you guys didn't know, I did a review video on this RAM recently because we used it in my brother's PC. And of course, he saw the video and he wanted to actually get this exact RAM. Now, we could have gone with 36 megahertz instead of 32, but the difference between gaming between 32 and 36 isn't really too much of a difference. And also, to get 36, it would have been like another, was it 40 to $50? So we just went with this instead. This only came at a price of $130. So it's gonna be way worth it to use in the long run. And you will not have to worry about RAM for the future at all. For storage, we're going with the Samsung 980 Pro two terabyte M.2 NVMe hard drive. This is the first time I've actually gotten to use this for myself. I actually usually use the one terabyte version for most of my PC build video because it's like the best boot drive you can get on the market. So using this is a beggar upgrade just because it's gonna be two terabytes instead of one terabyte. You can't really build a PC without having at least one terabyte of boot storage. For our motherboard, we went with the ASRock B450M. This is like the best motherboard you can get for AM4 on the actual market right now. It's like $95, comes with two M.2 slots, plus another half slot for M.2 if you want to use like a Wi-Fi adapter. And of course, there's like one gigabyte internet on board. And it just comes with so many bells and whistles. Like the price, $95 for this motherboard is such a steal. For a GPU, we went with the 4070. That is right. This is my first ever 40 series card actually using here on the channel. And I'm super excited about this because this is like the best GPU you can get right now that isn't scalped the absolute heaven and hell. Because like the, we were originally going to go with like a 4080 and stuff like that, but it's kind of a shit show right now, especially with the Super Series, like $1,000 to $900. But we actually got this for only $549. That is right. And this is the Trio version too, with 12 gigs of VRAM. So like, this is gonna be absolutely amazing to game on, and it'll be future-proof with the actual VRAM on top of it. Like, you will not have to upgrade his GPU, probably for like eight years. So yeah, I cannot wait to actually install this GPU because this boy is massive. For power supply, we went with Corsair 750 watts. That is right. This is a semi-modular power supply that will be powering our system. And honestly, it's so freaking good. And we actually got it for such a great deal of $65 from Amazon. Now for our case, we went with the Monotech ARGB Air 100. If you guys did not know, I did a review video on this case. This case is honestly such a steal for $65. You of course can get it from Micro Center too, for cheaper sometimes, but this thing has three intake fans that are ARGB, and of course they're 120 millimeter, which is amazing. And it has one in the back too that's ARGB, and it's of course 120. So this thing already comes like four fans for $65, and it's such a good deal. So let's get into building this now. So the first thing we do is install our CPU onto our motherboard. So what we need to do is lift up the little lever on the actual motherboard here, and grab our CPU, which of course we got it right here. And what we need to do is line up this gold triangle with the actual black triangle on the actual socket. So you can see right here on the actual motherboard, there's a yellow black triangle. So we're gonna take our gold, our CPU and line it on up and just install that. But what we need to do is just take our CPU, line it up just so carefully so that way it just slips on in. Perfect and lined up perfectly. And now what we're gonna do is take this little lever and just push it on down in so that way it snaps. And with that, our CPU is now installed into the motherboard. The next thing to do is install our RAM. So what we need to do is install it in the two and four slots. So we're just gonna plop these on open like so. 
so that way we can actually install them. We need to make sure they do this on both sides. If it actually does, or maybe it's one of those motherboards where you don't have to do it on both sides. Okay, this one actually is interesting. So instead of opening both sides of the slots, you only open it from the top side, not the bottom side. Usually it's uh, the both sides, but this one's like similar to my brother's PC where it's only done from one side. So what we need to do is just slip this one in here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slip it on both sides and we're gonna add a little bit of pressure on one side that should push it on in. Then pop on the outside, that's one stick. Now we're gonna install into the four slot. Same thing, make sure the tooth is lined up. And the, basically what we're gonna do is take the logo, point it towards the CPU with this one. And we're gonna push this on in. With that, our actual RAM and CPU are now installed in the motherboard. So the next thing we're gonna do is install our M.2 into the actual motherboard. So we need to remove this M.2 armor slot. Now I've already unscrewed it for the time being. And we're just gonna take this like so, set it to a side. And all we need to do is grab our M.2 and make sure the bottom tooth is actually pointing to the bottom side of the actual slot. So what we're gonna do is take this little M.2, we're gonna line this on up, and then I should be able to just kind of like wiggle this on in here, like so. With that, our M.2 is pretty much good to go. So all we have to do now is put back the armor slot, but before we do that, we need to make sure they actually uninstall this peel, because this peel is supposed to be like an adhesive peel. And if you leave this on, of course it's plastic, so it could be somewhat uh, problematic to actually just leave on it. I'm gonna actually remove this with two hands real quick. But now that we got the peel done, we can just take this armor slot and place it back down on the actual like M.2 because it's supposed to like line up perfectly that you can just like screw it on down and then it will just like install a CPU like you normally, not CPU, the M.2 like you normally do with one without an armor slot. But uh, of course the screws are gonna be somewhat painful. So we'll do this side first. Worst case scenario, I put this armor slot back on and it just doesn't line up properly. So then it doesn't like give us a good drive, which would be Worst case scenario, I like these armor slot things because they can be better for like performance and cooling, but sometimes it can also be like a hassle to remove depending on like the motherboard. Like on my MSI one, it's actually uh, terrible because you have to like, unscrew like four different slots, but this one's like just two, so that's really nice. It's actually way simpler than I thought it would be. With that though, our M.2 is installed. So the next thing to do is install the IO shield. Now, there was a little thing of adhesive in the back holding this like People, uh, cushion thing. I removed it because of the fact that I was having some problems installing the actual motherboard properly. So we just need to take this IO shield now and just plop it on in. There's a place on the back side lining up with the spike side pointed towards inward. We should just push this on like so. Perfect. The same thing on the other side and then just push it on top and then our IO shield is now perfectly installed and you want to make sure that the audio jacks point towards the bottom of the case. Now what we can do is take our motherboard what we want to do is angle it like so, like at an angle. Just line that on up and place this in like so. With that, our motherboard is all good to go. Now, the hard drive kit did come with some screws, so make sure to pull this on out. And we want to grab these screws that look like this. And we want to screw these into the recommended actual slot. So there's like one here on the corner. There's like one up top. There's one over there on the right side. And a few other places, so I'm just going to quickly screw these on in. Okay, so change of plans. Uh, I have to change the cooler. So originally I was gonna go with that deep cool one. I uh, found out for some reason, this socket is not working. Even though it's supposed to be AM4, it's not working for this one. I think it's because of the motherboard layout. So we're gonna go with the race to learn cooler instead. So uh, yeah, kind of unfortunate, not the worst thing in the world. So I'm gonna actually show you guys some footage from a different video on how they install the Wraith cooler because of the fact that I uh, kind of only have two hands right now and I'm kind of limited. So uh, yeah. The next thing we're gonna do is install the right cooler. So what we're gonna do is go to the back here of the uh, motherboard. So we're gonna get the plate we got with the motherboard that came with it. We're gonna just line this on like so. With that, what we're gonna do is then grab our cooler. What we're gonna do is line up the four points with, of course, the four points on our actual back plate here. What we're gonna do is add a little bit of pressure on each chai. You'll hear it turn, and you wanna just keep doing that for like a minute. Once you know it's tightened on all four ends, you are good to go with your CPU Wraith and cooler installer. Now that we got the cooler installed, all we have to do is plug in our CPU uh, fan header. So we're gonna just take that, place it on the top side of it, and just bada bing bada boom, we shook out that in there, bang. Our CPU fan is now perfectly installed. I'm gonna run this a little bit so it's not too much in the way. But with that though, what we can do is just slip in the power supply in, because now we have all the cables and stuff, and we can do that. Yeah, and then all you just need to do is take our four screws that we actually have to actually screw in our power supplies. We're just gonna take this one and screw it on in into each of the four actual slots here. So I'm gonna take care of that real quick. After we get this installed, I'm just gonna speed around installing all the other cables so that way we're all good to go. Okay, so everything is plugged in and pretty much all good to go. 
all we have to do is install the final component, which is the GPU, baby. I am looking forward to this one. I've already removed the slots because this one is one of those things where when you remove the slots, it's a one-time thing, so you won't reinstall them again. But here is the GPU itself, and she is thick. Here she is, the main girl, sorry, the Char of the show, the 4070 uh 12 gig and i'm just gonna quickly say like this card looks so flipping good uh so of course it has so let's see on here uh three display ports and then one hdmi as soon as hdmi 2.1 just based on everything i know uh so let's actually take these beautiful things off and then install it and in, into our case I got five percent battery on my phone can i record this before my phone dies let's find out all right one-handed gp installation um, hopefully I don't drop anything like Linus does and we're chilling. Uh, we'll see what happens to that though. Uh, let me just line it on up first in here. Okay, I got her installed. I had to actually like put my camera down just for a second to get installed. But you see, GPU is installed. She looks absolutely gorgeous and damn, she is thick boy. Uh, so let's plug her on in. Okay, plugged everything, GPU is installed. Everything's good to go. The real question now, will it boot? Okay, moment of truth. Oh, that's a good sign. Okay, the serious question is, will we get a signal on the screen over there? If we do, it boot. And if it didn't, we uh, messed up somehow. Just ignore the cute cat on my desk. He's just kind of sleeping. Okay, so it looks like we got everything working. I guess the only thing now is do is install uh, Windows onto it. So I got my Jink Windows 11 thumb drive and I've never seen that before in my life. So I guess what we'll do is just like turn this off and what we'll do while it's turning off, we're just gonna Plug that on in, our thumb drive, and then we're gonna push that. We got to work with no problem. So originally I thought there were gonna be something go wrong to be completely honest with you guys, but we can now officially install uh, Windows on this computer with really no issues. So I'm just gonna start installing now and set that on up for you guys. Okay, Windows is all set up. The only thing we need to do before we actually start using this is actually uh, enable XMP. So what we're gonna do is reset our Windows. We're gonna mash the delete key on our keyboard real quick here. This will be my first time inside of the uh, ASRock BIOS for actually messing with this. So like if you're using ASRock, you're gonna see how to enable XMP and stuff. So let's go down here, it says frequency for a DM. So it's like 32, that's default. We can customize this by selecting and then we'll go to the 32. And that's pretty good. And all we have to do is now, I think it's click boot, right? Is that it? Is that really it? I think so, or is it just exit? Oh, you gotta go to exit, okay. And with that, we can just exit and save. And with that, we should have 32 megahertz instead of the default. Okay, so we load up the computer. Let's check task manager to see if we have the appropriate RAM speeds. So performance, and here we go. We got our eight core 16 thread CPU, 64 gigabytes of RAM, perfect. And also 32 megahertz for the maximum frequency for it. And man, our 4070 is right here and it looks absolutely amazing. So now that we got XMP enabled, I'll set up the drivers and let's do some game testing.
Okay, so the PC turned out amazing. I will quickly say that this thing looks absolutely fantastic and the performance from this thing was just incredible. Like every game we threw at it hit over 200 FPS to 300 FPS depending on like low settings and stuff like that and what the game was. The only two games we didn't hit 100 FPS on was Rust, but that's a CPU game more than a GPU game. On top of that too, it's sometimes server limited. So there's a lot of variables for it, but most times around if you hit like 80 FPS on it, you can hit way more if the server wasn't capped. But like it did what we did, it did 80 on that. So that was pretty nice. And the other game we tested that didn't do that well was the finals. But then again, the finals on Epic settings or an ultra is just an absolute monster to deal with, especially with ray tracing enabled too, because we had like all the stuff maxed out. So you know for a fact that it hitting that much FPS on that game was pretty nice. But then if we disabled a lot of stuff too, I'm willing to bet money. We could hit 140 to 200 FPS only finals on low settings. And that's why I want to like showcase with the actual Apex footage, because you saw with Apex with the lowest settings possible optimized. We're hitting 300 FPS, the 260 FPS consistently, and we never went below that. So it just kind of goes to show like if you put in lowest settings possible, this thing will be an absolute menace the game on. And then if you want to of course increase the things to the absolute max, you can do so by having over at least 100 FPS to 200 FPS at times, and it'll just look absolutely fantastic. And that's what you saw with Overwatch. That game just looked absolutely amazing at max settings. And we're hitting like 160 to 140 plus as 200 at times. But yeah, this is an absolute beast of a PC. There are only two issues with this PC. First of all, we had the cooler. I originally wanted to go with a better cooler. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. So not the worst in the world. The CPU cooler is doing perfectly fine. I tested for a while now, old last night. Because literally, when I finished building this PC, it was like 3 a.m. So you know, after 3 a.m., I stayed up a little bit longer, tested it, and I tested it all this morning. And you can probably tell with the testing though then how much of a menace this actually is. And the other thing I do need to actually fix is the actual Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Now, there's no Wi-Fi that comes with this motherboard. However, you can get the M.2 adapter, and that was actually gives Bluetooth 2. I thought originally there was Bluetooth on the motherboard or the driver for it, but no, I'm gonna have to do an M.2 upgrade. But uh, yeah, the big question is now, how will we react to this new gaming PC? Let's actually find out. Okay, are you ready to see your new PC? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. I'm excited. Dude, it turned out so freaking good. This thing is a menace. Tested a few games on it, and it is gonna destroy everything you throw at it. How you like it? Sweet, it looks awesome. Like the look of it, dude. I the, the good thing about this case is that you are able to switch the fans by pushing like the top button on up. So if you don't want to like have like the colors, you can turn to dim color, which is pretty nice. Or you can have a static if you want to. But the big thing with this is the that GPU we got. It is massive. Like look how big that is. That's probably bigger than the one you have because I know you're. Oh my God, that's huge. <laughs> <laughs> that's what she said. Well, the fact that we had to get a bigger power supply yeah. than the one I had. Is that was going to be like the main issue because we have like the uninstall from the case and then also on top of that had to remove the cooler for it. So like there was a ton of problems with it. And this is such a big upgrade too because you were using like a 1660 Super, right? Yep. So you went to a 4070. Everything in the system is top spec. Besides like the GPU, I really wanted to get yourself a, a 4080, but they're over the price gap should be on the, the roof. So I was like, okay, that's not happening. But you want to try it? Absolutely. <laughs> so my neighbor really seemed to love his PC, so everything worked perfectly fine. The only thing I need to do later is install a Wi-Fi Bluetooth chip later, which is not going to be like the worst thing in the world. It's going to be really simple, so I'm going to set it up later with him, which is pretty nice. Now, of course, I will have everything I use in this video linked down below if you want to build this PC for yourself. But if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to smash the like button and get subscribed so I miss some future tech content. I'll see you guys for 901 Tech Grant out.